Hello and welcome to online and phone line worship from Lindsay Old. Um, it's lovely to have you join with us um, and we pray that you find this time of worship a time of peace and blessing. You can find out more about our church online uh, on Lindsay Old Church website and also Lindsay Old Facebook page and we're also on Twitter as well. And we also have a website, Lindsay Old parishchurch.co.uk So as I say it's lovely to have you with us today and uh, we can't be together physically but we are joined together by our common humanity and our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we worship this morning or this afternoon or this evening whenever you're worshipping let's just take a moment of peace and calm as we focus our hearts and minds on God. Let us pray. Holy God, who made each one of us in your image, created in love for love, each one of us with different gifts and talents, flaws and idiosyncrasies, uniqueness and complexities. Holy God, we praise you for the diversity of creation, for plant and tree, animal and bird, mountain and valley, sea and sand, sunset and moonrise. We praise you for the magnificence of creation, for the red dust of Mars, for the craters in the moon, the constellation of stars, and the unknowing vastness of the whole universe. Holy God, we praise you for one another, for family and friends, neighbours and colleagues, for our church family, for the gift of one another, the joy and comfort of human company, the deep connectiveness of talking and listening, sharing and receiving, laughing and crying. Holy God, we praise you for Jesus, your word made flesh, Jesus who embodied your love, encapsulated your truth and emanated your wisdom. And we praise you for our faith, at times as small and fragile as a mustard seed, at other times as sure and steadfast as a mountain. Whether fragile or strong, it sustains us through life, giving life deeper meaning and purpose and opening our hearts to the wonders of eternity. Holy God, you created a world full of abundance. In it we have water and crops, materials to build homes, animals to care for. There is enough for everyone, but still so many go without. And so this day we pray that you would forgive us when we see hunger and poverty, but look away not believing that we can make much of a difference anyway. Holy God, forgive us when we feel anger rise within us at the injustice others suffer, but we quell it because it makes us feel unsettled and uncomfortable. Holy God, forgive us when we fail to recognise that we are vessels of your love and that what we do for others matters greatly no matter how small or insignificant we believe it to be. And so, Holy God, as we worship you today, open our hearts to the ways in which you may be calling us to address the injustices of our world. Draw near to us as we reflect upon your word and join together in prayer as we pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading today is from the Gospel of John, John chapter 2, 
reading from verses 13 to 22. Let us listen for God's word for us today. Jesus clears the temple. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts he found men selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves he said, Get these out of here! How dare you turn my father's house into a market? His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews demanded of him, What miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, It has taken forty-six years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Amen, and thanks be to God for this reading of his holy word, and to his name be all honour, glory and praise evermore. Amen. There's a story about a man who lived in the outskirts of a village. About 30 feet from his house, a large lime tree grew. The tree was something of a village landmark. However, it was getting old and its roots were becoming unstable. And it was clearly only a matter of time before it came crashing down. And every time there was a storm, the man feared for his house and also his life. One day, unable to bear the strain and the worry any longer, he cut the tree down. He felt sure his fellow villagers would understand the reasons why he had had to do it. After all, if he didn't, the next time there was a storm, it could fall upon his house and endanger his life. But he was wrong. Instead of being understanding, his neighbours were very angry. How dare you cut down such a beautiful tree, they said to him. You've deprived our village of part of its heritage. The neighbours didn't care about the safety of the man. They only cared about their own personal interests that had been threatened. And that's the reason why they had gotten so angry. Anger. We all experience anger in our daily lives. Over the years, we've all experienced the impatient and angry driver peeping and tooting at us, not just once, but twice and numerous times, shaking their fists, rolling down their window, shouting expletives, so much so that the ferocity of their anger has perhaps even frightened us. It's a phenomenon so prevalent within our society that it has even been given a special name that of road rage. The Oxford Dictionary defines the noun anger as a strong feeling that makes you want to quarrel and fight. Anger in itself is a feeling which we all feel at times and as a feeling it is neither good nor bad morally but channeled in the wrong way anger can be a dangerous and destructive thing and can result in us saying and doing things that we later regret. And so with this understanding, we approach today's gospel reading with mixed feelings. For in this scene, we find Jesus, so often portrayed in the traditional image of being meek and mild. In today's reading, we find Jesus raging with anger, holding a whip in his hand, and to cap it all, we find him resorting to what seems like a form of violence as he overturns the money changers' tables and chases the animals and merchants out of the temple, all the while shouting at them, Get these out of here! How dare you turn my father's house into a market? How dare you turn my father's house into a market? Jesus had just arrived in Jerusalem for the Passover. And the Passover was a very important feast for the Jews. And the law stated that every adult male who lived within 15 miles of Jerusalem had to attend the feast. 
But attending the temple was a very costly business in Jesus' time. When the male pilgrims first arrived at the temple, they had to pay a temple tax equal to an average day's wage. This tax ensured that the temple rituals were carried out each day, but the tax had to be paid in special Jewish currency. Any other coins were considered unclean, and they had to be replaced with the correct and acceptable coins. So to help the pilgrims offer the correct coins, a group of money changers were available in the temple precincts. Now, the money changers charged the equivalent of one day's wages to exchange the pilgrim's coins. So before the feast had even started, each male pilgrim had had to pay out two days wages. Now, the next stage at the temple was that the pilgrims had to offer a sacrifice. And that sacrifice was an offering of thanks for a safe journey or some other event in the life of the pilgrim. A pilgrim could have taken their own animal into the temple for sacrifice or buy an animal from one of the traders outside the temple, a small animal costing the equivalent of one day's wages. But the temple rule stated that a sacrificial animal had to be perfect. So any animal that was brought into the temple was inspected for a small fee, about a quarter of a day's wages. And it was almost certain that any animal bought outside the temple would be declared unclean following the inspection, which cost a quarter of a day's wages. This then meant that the pilgrim had to buy one of the pure animals from the stallholders inside the temple. A small animal, which cost a quarter of a day's wages outside the temple, cost the same as 20 days wages from a stallholder inside the temple. So a trip to the temple to celebrate Passover for a male Jew cost them approximately 22 days wages. Of course, if you were rich, this cost wouldn't be a problem. But if you were poor, it was a huge problem. And so with this in mind, when we actually understand what was going on that day in the temple when Jesus walked in, we see the, that it was a monstrous exploitation of the poor to boost the income of the greedy money changers and stallholders, and all of it taking place in God's house. And so can we blame Jesus for feeling such anger and using that anger to set the animals free and scatter the coins of the money changers and overturn their tables. This anger didn't make Jesus popular with the priests and officials in the temple, who then went on to ask Jesus with what authority he had that he should cause such disarray and chaos within the temple. But what was happening was wrong. It was unjust. It was unfair, it was exploitation and manipulation. And Jesus didn't get angry on his own account. His anger resulted from his love of God and subsequent love of neighbour. Jesus would have saw with his own eyes that day those in the temple queuing to pay their temple tax and to then have money exchanged and then their animals inspected and the and in the process, handing over what could be as much as 22 days of their hard-earned wages, many of them thin, undernourished men, doing their duty, but at the same time worrying about the consequences this would have on their families. After all, 22 days wages to a poor man would have huge implications for his family's welfare. They may have to go hungry for a while to pay for all of this. Jesus had a righteous anger that day, an anger which was justified because it was wholly a reaction to the terrible injustice that he had witnessed carried out towards so many of God's precious children. So much of our anger can be like the story I shared at the beginning, all about us. So much of our anger can be a selfish anger, 
like the neighbours who didn't care about the poor man's welfare and reacted angrily to him for cutting down the lime tree because it would spoil their village and how their village looked. But our anger can also be a righteous anger, like the anger Jesus experienced that day in the temple. A righteous anger which stems from our love of God and love of other people, which rages at the injustices of others and in response seeks to do something about it. Perhaps today's gospel reading is nudging us not to make a whip and drive out the animals and money changers from the temple and overturn their tables, but to recognise the times when we do feel a righteous anger arising up within us at the injustice of others. And like Jesus, perhaps today's gospel reading is nudging us to do something about it. It could be as simple as buying more fair trade food or goods or writing a letter to an MSP. It could be channelling our righteous anger for our fellow human beings into giving to a charity or doing fundraising for those in our world who are denied equal rights and a voice. It could be signing an online petition or it could be praying regularly for a group of people in our world who are oppressed. There are no ends to the many ways that we can channel our righteous anger which we experience because of our love of God and others and our concern for them and our desire for all to be treated fairly and with respect in our world today. Some are called throughout the centuries and today some are called to do more, to stick their head above the parapet in such a way that the apple cart is forever disturbed and unsettled. You only need to think of William Wilberforce who campaigned most of his adult life for the abolition of slavery at great cost to his health and well-being. Or Mother Teresa, who set aside her desire for a comfortable life and instead lived amidst the slums and cared for the poor and the dull dying of Calcutta. And perhaps today we may think of Greta Thunberg, whose desire to save our beautiful planet for future generations has cost her dearly, has cost her a normal school life taking away her precious teenage years. Some in our world are called to do more as the righteous anger rises within them. But each one of us is called to do something when we feel that same righteous anger which Jesus experienced in the temple. We are all called to do something. And sometimes we believe anger is something negative and bad and sometimes it is when it is channeled in a negative way, manifesting itself in the road rage or other forms of physical or emotional violence towards others. But we need not be afraid of the kind of anger that Jesus showed in the temple in today's reading righteous anger, the kind of anger which stems from our love of God and others, the kind of anger which Jesus experienced rising up within him in the temple that day that led to him being raging as he witnessed so many poor men being exploited. We need not be afraid of this kind of righteous anger, for it is one of the ways God's Spirit works through us to effect change within our world. For the better. As I end today, I am reminded of the words of the hymns from the of the hymn from the Iona community called Jesus Christ is waiting. And one of the verses says it says Jesus Christ is raging, raging in the streets where injustice spirals and real hope retreats. Listen, Lord Jesus, I am angry too. In the kingdom's causes, let me rage with you. 
listen, Lord Jesus, I am angry too. In the kingdom's causes, let me rage with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us come before God with our prayers for the world and for others. Let us pray. Lord God, your Son, our Lord Jesus, came into our world and showed righteous anger, the kind of anger emanating from his great love of you and others. For you see injustice and your blood boils. You see the meagre wage being handed out. You see the young woman being exploited. You see men and women, boys and girls, tricked and trafficked and abused, and your heart burns. You see hatred and cruelty, and your spirit seethes for those caught up in its wake. Your heart breaks at our increasing indifference within our society to acts of violence and brutality. For whatever destroys hope and denies love, and whatever demeans the dignity of a human being, arouses wrath in you. And so we pray for all in our world who are used and abused, who are oppressed and downtrodden, who are denied human rights, who are treated unfairly, and create in us a desire, however small, to do what we can to bring justice for all. Lord God, in seeking justice for your world, we also bring before you our prayers for those who are in need of a special touch of your love this day. And we pray for those bereaved, those lonely, those in hospital, those undergoing an operation or treatment. We pray for those with COVID and those recovering. We pray for those with mental illness and those with dementia. We pray for our children and young people. We pray for those anxious about the future. We pray for those unable to let go of past guilt and past regret. Loving God through your Holy Spirit, you can listen to all our prayers even as we meet on the phone line and social media. And so as we pray to you in silence, scoop up all our prayers and hold them close to your heart. Breathe the warmth of your love on each person we name. And may they be aware of your strong, secure arms, carrying them and supporting them and guiding them in the next right step. Eternal God, as we journey into this coming week, may we become aware of just how loved we are by you and how we deserve to be treated with dignity and respect and fairness. And knowing this, may we show that same dignity, respect and fairness to others, always striving to do whatever we can to build your kingdom of love and justice and peace on this earth this day and forevermore. Amen. We now draw to the end of our service today and uh, thank you for joining with us in worship. It's been a pleasure to have you with us and uh, we hope that you've found peace and blessing and you've felt closer to God and our Lord Jesus Christ through this time of online and phone line worship. So I'm going to finish now with the benediction. So may God bless us all with a holy anger at injustice, oppression and exploitation of God's creations so that we may all work for justice, freedom and peace. And so may the blessing of the God of justice the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day 
and forevermore. Amen.